So we are starting the slot machine project. The idea of this is that we will be able to put in some parameters and make a slot, slot machine that we can play around with and uh, that it would actually give us a winning or losing scenario. So we're going to start out with a constructor. I've written out kind of the idea of the roadmap that we want to do under the main method. So we want to have an adjustable number of reels. That's the parts that spin. A minimum of three, I think. Uh, adjustable selections per reel, so how many options can be on a reel. Uh, we want to figure out what the cost is going to be per spin. So I'm thinking maybe uh, there's an amount per reel, and then multiply that by the number of pay lines. We're going to talk about pay lines in a little bit. Basically, that's just the pattern of matching the symbols, uh, or in our case, numbers. And then variable view box, minimum three. So that's how many of the rows are available or are being able to be seen whenever you spin. So in our constructor, we have our inputs of number of reels, selections per reel, and cost per reel. We're going to make all of those ints because they shouldn't be very big. Now we just need to declare these variables so that when we have them entered into the constructor, we have a place to put them, thus making them global variables. So now we can check off the first two because those are now adjustable when we call the constructor. Next, we'll be making our toString method, which will allow us to print out two, we'll have a string that we can then print out to the console. I'm going to use this as our opening message to the user. And again, we're going to use the string buffer for this so we can append to it throughout the toString method. Now we can give the user a welcome message. Remember to add a new line. tell them the number of reels that they have, and then we're just going to print out the global variable. Now we can let them know how many selections per reel that they will have. And then we're going to let them know what the cost per line will be. So they actually insert what the cost per reel will be into the constructor. And then we're going to tell them what it will be per pay line. And that'll make a little bit more sense later. As you can see, we're going to multiply the cost per reel by the number of reels, and then that will allow them to see what that cost per pay line will be. So 
So we'll add that to string in a print statement in the constructor so it'll get called every time the constructor gets called. And now we can make an instance of our slot machine. So now we can look at what the parameters are and what order they are in. So the first one will be the number of reels. We're going to say three for now. It's kind of a standard number. This back in the old school days. We'll say there's five selections per reel. And that the cost is one unit. We'll say one token. And again, that's per reel. So we have to remember to add those new lines. But that means that since we have three reels, that every spin will cost us three tokens. And now we can see that everything is in line like we want it to be. So now we actually want to get the results of a spin. Uh, that we're actually going to be using the random function which is going to be a random number generator, or you also hear them called RNGs. And this is how we will get a randomized number, and then we'll duplicate that for however many reels there are. So we're going to make it private just because for right now we don't need it to, we don't need any other class to access it. And we're going to have it return an int array. So we will start with an empty int array that will then allow us to populate it so I'm going to run through the list with a for loop As it iterates through, we're now going to assign each indice of the spin results array to now a random number. So we're going to use math.random, and this is going to give us a number less than 1, so it's going to give us a decimal. In order for us to get an int out of this, because our array is of type int, we will want to multiply it by some number, usually a uh, factor of 10. So we're going to multiply it by 10, and then we're going to use modulo of how many, uh, of what the selection per reel is. What that's going to do is it'll divide it by whatever the selection per reel number is and give us the res remainder result, which means it will never be more than our selections per reel. For instance, if we had five selections per reel, we'll never get a number above four actually, because zero will replace five. This is a nice, easy, quick way to make sure that we don't have a number larger than what we're expecting. So now we can return spin results. As we call get spin results from our instance of S1, making sure that we uh, print out the result, otherwise we won't see it, then we will be able to see what the result is. Now remember it's going to show you an object so if you actually want to see what's inside of an array use arrays.toString encapsulate that array in there and then we'll be able to see what a result is. So in this case it's 442, 322, 120, 101, 342 and now if we change 
the amount of reels, we'll see that we now have more reels every time we run it. So at this point, we actually have a working slot machine that is giving us random numbers in a random order. And it just gives us more selections per reel. So it's going to go from 0 to 8. And if we do more, now we can see more at a time. So this kind of simulates a view box. However, if you look, they're not in sequential order. So we'll look at that later.